This segment of our course on dynamic balancing deals with the basic equipment that you'll be expected to use in this course. Needless to say, there is a wide variety of balancing machines on the market. Each of them is designed to do at least part of the job for you. How much the machine does will vary considerably. For example, this particular machine performs all of the calculations without any real help from you. All you have to do is mount the equipment in the balancing machine, feed a few basic facts about the equipment in the machine, and it will give you your answer. It not only tells you where to place the balance weights, but also the exact weight to be used to correct your unbalanced problem. Needless to say, a machine like this one can be a tremendous time and work saver. However, your plant may not have one like it, or the machine you have may operate differently. Most important, however, is the fact that these machines are permanently mounted and are not moved from one location to another. This means that you must bring the equipment to the machine, since the machine cannot be taken to the equipment. For this reason, a different system of dynamic balancing must be used for what is called field or in-place balancing. It requires the use of a minimum of very portable equipment and accomplishes the same thing. The only difference is that you perform the calculations which are performed by the machine in your shop. As you were shown during the last segment, Unbalance is detected through vibration of the rotating equipment. This vibration is then used to pinpoint the location of the heavy spot, which is the problem. Once you know the location of the heavy spot, you can add or remove a correction weight to the rotating assembly to remove the unbalance. This machine detects the vibration in your equipment measures it, pinpoints the source, then calculates the correction weight which must be added, and even where it should be placed. We will be doing exactly the same thing in this training module. However, we will use this vibration analyzer and its accessories to detect the vibration, measure it, and pinpoint the source. From that point on, you will replace the machine. You will perform the calculations to solve the unbalanced problem. You will calculate the amount of weight to be added and where it should be placed. Although it will take you longer than this machine, you can perform a balancing operation wherever you want, which this machine cannot do. The only equipment you will use is a vibration analyzer, a stroboscopic light, and a vibration pickup. Since you have already completed a course on vibration analyzers, you should be familiar with the operation of this type of equipment. However, we will briefly familiarize you with this particular analyzer so you can easily follow our actions throughout the remainder of this course. Although your analyzer may vary somewhat from this one, you'll find that most of the operation will be identical. We chose this particular machine because it is a popular type widely used in dynamic balancing of the type we'll be teaching in this training module. As you saw a moment ago, we'll be using a strobe light and a vibration pickup with the analyzer in this course. They are connected to the instrument in this rear panel. By looking closely, you'll see that each of the receptacles and connections is clearly marked. Starting on the left, you will find two power connections. This is the power cord, which may be plugged into any standard 110-volt AC outlet. Next to the power inlet is a power outlet. This was placed here as a convenience for you during operation of the instrument. In short, it allows you to plug any other accessory into the back of the analyzer, instead of having to locate another 110-volt outlet. Immediately to the right of the power connections on this model is a connection for the strobe, or stroboscopic light, which will be used during your balancing operation. 
Even further to the right is the connection for the vibration pickup, with which you should already be familiar. The main fuse holder is located here on this analyzer. With a spare fuse in this holder. There are also connections for a scope jack or oscilloscope and a DC recorder. Since neither of these accessories are required in dynamic balancing, we won't go into detail about them in this module. Now let's look at the control switches and meters on the front of the analyzer. Although you are probably already familiar with the operation of most of them, we will describe the function of each briefly, in case any are strange to you. To begin with, this is the amplitude meter. As you can see, it is identical to the amplitude meter on most other instruments of its type. It is used to measure the displacement of the vibration in mils, or the velocity in inches per second. You can choose the function by simply changing the position of this displacement velocity selector switch. By looking closely, you'll see that each of the functions is color-coded on this particular model. The displacement mode in white and the velocity in red. The colors correspond to the scales on the amplitude range selector switch. The inside scale in white indicates the multiples of the amplitude meter scales, ranging from 100 to 0.1. As you can see, this scale also includes an off position to turn the analyzer on and off, and a test position to test the operation of the instrument prior to its use. The actual test procedure for your analyzer is outlined in the manufacturer's manual. Since yours may be somewhat different, we won't go into detail on the test procedure for this model. The outer scale of the amplitude range selector switch, shown in red, is utilized when using the amplitude meter to measure velocity. Another familiar feature of this analyzer is the frequency meter, shown here. This particular meter has two color-coded scales, one white, the other yellow. They correspond to matching scales on the frequency range selector. And the filter dial. We'll show you more in just a moment. But first, let's look closer at the frequency meter, the top scale, in white, covers a range from 0 to 1,500. The bottom scale, in yellow, ranges from 0 to 5,000. You would then refer to this frequency range selector to determine the scale to be used and the actual range it would measure. For example, the instructions underneath the selector tell you to multiply the frequency range times 1,000. If the selector was in this position, you would multiply 1.5 times 1,000, giving you an answer of 1,500. You would then use the top scale of the frequency meter, also in white, and read it as a range of 0 to 1,500 cycles per minute. Now let's turn the switch to the number 50 in yellow, Multiplying it by 1,000 gives you a result of 50,000. You would use the yellow scale on the frequency meter and read it from 0 to 50,000. As with any other vibration analyzer, you would select the frequency range according to the speed of the equipment you're balancing. Always select the lowest possible range, which includes the operating speed. This would also ensure a reading in the top part of the scale. Fine tuning of the frequency dial is performed with this tuning knob. The dial has two color-coded scales, which allow you to fine-tune the filter to the exact frequency of the vibration you are measuring. 
When the filter switch is in the out position, as shown here, the vibration shown on the amplitude meter is the total of all of the vibration at all frequencies. However, turning the filter selector switch to the in position filters out all vibration except that occurring within 5% on each side of the tuned frequency. If the frequency dial was set at 1000 CPM, then 5% of that would be 50. In other words, the filter would block out all vibration at frequencies less than 950 or more than 1050 cycles per minute. This allows you to pinpoint the frequency of the maximum vibration. The other feature of this particular analyzer is the OSC mode of the filter selector switch. This engages an oscillator which triggers the strobe light. The rate at which the strobe light flashes is governed by the setting of the frequency range selector and the tuning dial. In other words, you can select the frequency or rate at which you wish the strobe to flash and adjust it accordingly. However, the rate at which the strobe flashes can also be governed by the frequency of the vibration. All that's necessary is to turn the filter selector switch to the in position. The strobe is now triggered by the vibration and will flash at the exact same frequency as the vibration. The strobe is used in this mode during dynamic balancing to determine the phase of vibration. That concludes a basic familiarization with the features of the vibration analyzer which will be used in this training module. As we mentioned earlier, your instrument may be somewhat different than our model. However, you'll find the same basic controls with only minor variations in configuration or placement. Consult your manufacturer's manual or instructor if you encounter any difficulty. Once you have obtained the required equipment for dynamic balancing, it will be necessary to prepare the rotating assembly which is to be used. The preparation of the equipment to be balanced is as varied as the equipment itself. For instance, preparing this electric motor for balancing would be somewhat different than a similar setup for this centrifugal blower. There are procedures for this included in the reference section of your workbook. For our purposes in this training module, we will use this simple rotating assembly for demonstration purposes. First, we will install it between centers in a lathe and check it for straight. Once that's done, we'll polish the shaft bearing journals to remove any nicks or other irregularities. Now, check the shaft bearing journals with a micrometer to make sure they're not out of round. Note the measurements, since you will need them in the next step. We will now install the assembly in a carrier, which has adjustable bearings, which must be set for the size of the rotating assembly shaft. Secure the shaft in the bearings. Then connect a driver to the rotating assembly, and double-check it to make sure the connection is tight. The carrier and driver being used here are intended as a substitute for the bearings and driver which would normally rotate the assembly in its natural environment. As we mentioned a moment ago, we're using this procedure for demonstration purposes, since it is easier to see the rotating assembly here than if it were still installed inside a piece of equipment in the field. During this segment, we have familiarized you with the vibration analyzer, which will be used throughout the remainder of this training module. We will go into more detail in the next segment, showing you how it is used and when. We have also prepared the rotating assembly, which will be used. The next step will be the actual operation of dynamic balancing. But first, complete the questions in exercise number two of your workbook.